make, because this right here, this has lots of stuff going on. Not all the problems are this busy. But when they do get really busy, you have to be very careful about what order are you doing the transformations in. Now, 90% of the time, even if you got the order wrong, you might still have the right answer. But sometimes, especially that I will statement, you have to be careful. So in general, in general, the order goes like this. You do your horizontal shift first, whichever it's going left or right. Um, you do any um, reflections next. Then you do compressor stretch. And then you do vertical shift. This is technically the way to do it. And I, in fact, I might even have it wrong. I'll check it. No, that's good. Um, but over here, what I have is sort of a, a trick for remembering the order. This trick works about 95% of the time. So it's pretty reliable as far as tricks go. Think about it kind of like PEMDAS. Okay. Do anything inside parentheses first. Well, that's your horizontal shift, right? Insiders lie. Um, there won't be anything to do with exponents. So the next thing in order of operations is M for multiplication. That's your reflection piece because the multiplication might be times a negative one somewhere. And that's always going to reflect in a certain direction. Um, stretch or compress. Stretch or compress is a multiplication because you're multiplying the Y value by something. And then the last thing you would do, still like if you're thinking kind of like order of operations, the last thing is any add or subtract. That's your vertical shift. Okay. So we're going to sort of rely on this a little bit just to help us remember the order. Um, all right. So our first few examples, we're not actually shifting anything. We're just going to be given an equation and two examples, and we're going to decide which one we think is correct. I'm going to have you vote on it. So t take a minute, look at those two pictures, look at the function, get it in your head which one you think it is, and, I'm gonna, and then I'm going to ask you to vote. Everybody must hold up their hand for their vote. Who thinks it's the right graph? Mm -hmm. Who thinks it's the left graph? Did, I, did everybody hold it? It is the left graph. Now, linear is kind of, um, the, way, the way linear is different from all the other parent functions we have is there's, this, there's no identifiable point. Like there's no vertex, there's no initial point, there's no inflection point. So it's kind of hard to see which way it's shifted if you're just basing it on a particular point, because where would the point be? It's a line. What's the key feature here that tells us it's this function? The plus two, right? It went up two right there. So that's the key part. That's the money part on it. All right. Take a minute and think about this one. Which graph you think that is, and then we're going to vote. Okay, everyone has to vote. Who thinks it's the right one? Who thinks it's the left one? Yeah, it is the left one. Who didn't have it? Who didn't know? Who didn't have an answer? It's the left one. So if you're following your order of operations-ish, you would do insider's lie first, so that means left six. And then multiplication next. Okay, here's some more notes I want you to write down on here. When the negative is in front of the function. So when there's a negative in front, 
What that means is, bless you, your, bless you, Y value is changing sign. So if your original value was a positive Y, a negative out front would make it a negative Y. If it was originally a negative Y, a, po a negative out front makes it positive. Well, which axis am I flipping over when that happens? This one, right, the X axis. So when the negative's in front, you're going to reflect over X. Okay. But there's one other place you might see a negative, and it's directly in front of the X, like it's attached to it. So when the negative is attached to the X, That means the X is changing sign. So if the X was positive, now it's negative. If the X is negative, now it's positive. Which axis is that flipping over? The Y axis, right? So this means reflect over Y. So that's how I think about keeping those things straight. The negative directly touching the X means X is changing sign. The negative in front means that the y is changing sign. Because this value, this function right here, is giving you your y value. So whatever's going on here is y. And that in front means your y is changing sign. Okay. Does anybody need that up anymore? All right. Think about that one for a second. Who votes left? Who votes right? It's absolutely left. Um, insiders lie right here means which direction? Right. Because it's lying. It's lying to you. It's on the inside, it lies. When it's on the outside, it does not lie. So that's going which direction? Down. So look at those. If you're trying to find the vertex, originally 0, 0, but right 2, down 5 is right here. And so it's the left one. Right. And so that's just recognizing. And the first part of your homework is a bunch of problems like that, recognizing the transformed graph. And then the second part is actually doing the transformations yourself, which we're going to do now. And these are the instructions. We're going to graph using shifts of the parent function, okay? We're not using tables of values. We're just shifting it using the rules of transformation. And we're going to indicate what the transformations are. And then we're going to identify their special points. We're going to write the order of pair for its new vertex or its new initial point or its new inflection point, whatever graph we're working with, its special it's special point. So look at that function. What is the parent function here? The original one before transformation. Square root, okay? So it's square root of x. That looks like this. And we're going to do some transformations. How many transformations do you see there? Two. Two. Um, if you're thinking about your PEMDAS kind of, sort of, parentheses or what's inside is right here. Remember, insiders lie. So it says minus 3, but it means what? Plus 3, and it, that's which direction? Right. So that's the first transformation. And then plus 2 is on the outside, so it's not lying because outsiders don't lie. So that means go up 2. So I always recommend that you start by graphing your parent function. Even if it's just real light, it doesn't have to be very dark, but just as a placeholder. And so, and I like to do three points for each thing. I don't require you to do any more than three. Uh, what's the initial point for square root? Zero, zero. And then what do we do next? One, one. What's the next most easily square rootable x value? 
4, right? So when x is 4, y is 2. And so that's your parent function. And that's the one we're going to be shifting around. No, if the directions don't say do it, you don't have to do it. It's good practice. It helps keep your stuff straight. But it's not required if it doesn't say you have to. So now I'm going to do these transformations on each of those points. So starting with 0, 0, I'm going right 3, up 2. Right 3, up 2. And there's my new initial point. And then I take the 1, 1, and I go right 3, up 2. And then I take the 4, 2 point and do the exact same thing. Right 3, up 2. Now that method is good if you're the kind of person who has a hard time visualizing the transformations. You don't have to visualize anything. You only have to be able to do the transformations on one point at a time. But some of you may be able to do a little bit faster and you see things faster. All you really have to do to speed things up is do your transformation on the initial point or the vertex or whatever function you're dealing with. So a faster way would be just do this point first and then imagine that the graph is shifted and that's your new 0, 0. Because if that's your new 0, 0, now you need a quote, 1, 1, and 4, 2. And you just count out the points from the parent point. Especially considering there was no reflection or compression or stretch. Whichever way you like. You can visualize it quickly, you can do faster. If you have a hard time, just graph your parent function and then do the transformations on every single point and then connect them for your new graph. Any questions about this one? Okay, next one. Um, what is the parent function? Not cubed squared, right? And how many things are happening to it? Like how many different transformations do you see? Three. There's been three changes to the original function. There's a minus two, there's a negative out front, and there's a plus five, right? So here's the parent function is x squared. That looks like a parabola. And the transformations, if we're Thinking about PEMDAS, you take care of the parentheses first, so that's the minus 2. But insiders lie, so it really means you're going to go to the right 2. You can go right 2 first. And then do multiplication next. There is a multiplication, it's this negative 1 out front. When the negative is out front, is it going to reflect over x or over y? Over the x, okay? Because it's the y values that are getting their signs changed. So flip it over x. And then that plus 5 way over there on the outside means what? Up 5. Okay. So take a minute and do your parent. Well, let's talk about the parent graph together. Um, for the parent function, the vertex is 0, 0. And what's another point for that? 1, 1. And if I'm only requiring you to do three points, which I am only requiring you to do three, the third point is negative 1, 1. Okay, so that's your parent function. Try the transformations on there for just a moment and see what you come up with. I don't have anything to say. Give the people a minute to look at the picture and then change. Okay. All right, so this is our last example. There, this one's real busy. I want you to just for a minute um, write down what the transformations are. Just on the side, write down 
what order you think they go in, what they are. On this one, the order absolutely matters. So this is a cubic. If you're taking care of inside the parentheses first, this one's different because how many transformations do you see in there? Two, inside the parentheses, though. I'm just gonna, there's two, right? So the question is, which one do you do first? Well, if you go back to the screen here, oh my goodness, what did I do that for? Um, this PEMDAS stuff was just sort of a helpful thing. But the actual order that you can rely on every time without any kind of tricky acronym is this. Horizontal first, reflections next, then compress and stretch, then vertical. So in that parentheses where you have two things going on, you do the horizontal one first and the reflection second. So going back to the problem, There's a plus two and a negative. Which one do we need to do first? If we're doing horizontal stretch or horizontal first, the plus two. And that's insiders lie, so it means go left two. And then that negative is attached to the X. So that means the X values are changing their sign. So if X values are changing their sign, which axis are they flipping over? the y axis, right? So this is a flip over y, or a reflection rather. So that's your horizontal, um, that's a reflection. Then any multiplication, we do have a multiplication, we have a three. If you're taking your y values and multiplying by three, are you stretching it or compressing? If you're multiplying it by three. Stretching, right? Because if y was one, it's now going to be three way up here. So multiplying by three is a stretch. Anything less than one would be a compression because you're decreasing the value. And then the last one is the negative one. That means a down by one. Okay. So real quickly, the parent points for this function are zero, zero. 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. Take a minute and do your transformations on those and see what graph you come up with. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about it. This one I'm going to do point by point because it's difficult, okay? I'm not going to try and do any ninja fast moves on you. So I'm going to start with the inflection point. It's right here. I'm going to go left to. Good? And, left two. and then I'm going to go over Y. So if I'm left 2 and I'm reflecting over Y, I need to be to the right 2 of Y, right? Okay. And then stretch by 3 means you take the Y value and stretch it by 3. You multiply by 3. What is the Y value here? 0, right? And what's 0 times 3? 0, so I stay there. And then I go down one. I'm right there. So then I go to the next point. I'm going to start with one, one. I go left two. I'm here. Over y. So right now I'm one to the left of y. If I'm going to reflect it over, I need to be one to the right, which is right there. Then I need to stretch by three. What is the y value here? One, okay. And what is one times three? Three. So now I'm at the same x y. So now I'm here at y equals three. And then I go down one, right here. And I'm going to show you the last point again because repetition is good. So this last point at negative 1, negative 1, I'm going to go left 2, which is here. 
reflecting over y means right now I'm to the left three places. Reflecting over y means I'm going to be to the right three places. Stretching by 3 means multiply your y by 3. Right now y is negative 1 and times 3 is negative 3. So that puts me here. And then I go down 1. If you're the kind of person who doesn't like to do point by point, which is fine, what you would have done is just started by transforming or shifting your your inflection point, which would be here, noticing that you have a reflection and that you have to stretch by three. So that would have been meaning it has to go in the other direction. You would have gone left one. And instead of up one, you would have gone up three. And then you would have gone to the right one and down three. But you would have had to reflect it. Okay.